made by God. You can quilt that out. That's what I've heard. You can quilt that out. That's the word. You're the professional. Anything is possible. I know it's not perfect. This is Ellen Ann Eddy. And I'd like to show you today how to do a stitch vocabulary. We're working with free motion, and there are three basic stitches. There's zigzag, there's straight, and there's garnet stitch. And all three of those can be used in wonderful ways, but it helps if you cheat and you practice. So we're going to do that. We're going to take a 9-inch square of white cotton with stabilizer behind it. We're going to doodle something, in this case a dragonfly. We're going to practice doing our zigzag straight out to the side and to an angle, and then we're going to do garnet stitch, so you know how to do it all. I want you to notice that I've put my foot down, I've threaded my machine after that, I've pulled my top thread up, and the first thing I'm going to do is just doodle. And since we're talking about dragonflies, we can make one really fast. a whole lot of fun. But once we've gotten out of straight stitch and out of that thing where we're just following our path and going where we want, we're going to have to think about the angle of our stitching. This is working straight stitch. Straight stitch is very simple. Working garnet stitch is not a stitch on your machine. It's simply doing a circle with your hands. And that can be done all kinds of ways. It can be done as a bullseye, it can be done as a little seed stitch. It's a very pretty thing, and there's a lot of ways to accomplish it. Now, once we go to zigzag, then our world becomes very different. There are two speeds. There's zigzag and there's straight. And if you've noticed, I was moving along at a relatively quick speed with my machine, and I was moving my hands relatively quickly. Now, I've changed to zigzag. I've put myself on about a three and a half which is not really a very useful uh, measure because different machines measure that in different ways. But what I want you to notice is that my speed changes immensely with how I move my hands. Um, I'm going to do just a straight zigzag out the way it would do it if it were being fed by the machine. This is running just straight through my machine. My angle is just straight through like that. And if you'll notice, I'm moving really, really slowly here. If I move quicker, I get something like that, and that's not very pretty. Now, if I move out to the side, I can move that more quickly, and look, that's a very different look. But much of the time, what we're going to be looking for, I'm angling straight through the machine at about a 45-degree angle. And that can wiggle and waggle and change. But what it does really well is it covers up airs. Now, if you're having trouble with it and you're moving too fast, you'll have spaces like I have there, you can go right back in and make that all better. Now, what eventually happens is you mix those two. We'll do an outline. shade something, and then we'll bring those two lines together by coming through almost straight through the machine. And like all organic processes, it has no absolutes. There's no absolutely correct. You end up working with it as you do. Now, for what we're going to start with is a soft edge applique, and for that, the stitch we're going to want is this stitch here. 
spot. We're going to move a little quicker because we really want to cover our edges, but we don't want to cut through. And we're going to use a clear thread, a monofilament thread, and I prefer the ones that are smoky because my fabrics are almost always um, darker. If you're using pastels or white, you will want the ones that are clear. And I'm going to put that in the top. What I'm going to put in the bobbin is a, is a polyester embroidery thread in a neutral. Now, why would I have two different threads? Well, monofilament nylon is really strong, and it really, really puckers up. You'll see right here, I'm already beginning to get some pretty intense distortion. But if I'm doing monofilament nylon with a zigzag stitch, the chances are very, very good that I could cut through Fragile Angelina. She's a pretty frail girl, Angelina is. So we're going to keep our zigzag stitch at that angle. It's going to cover our edges of our shears without anybody seeing it. I've done it in pink for you here so you can see it clearly. And you might want to make a little square pra to practice this. What this is is cotton, cotton muslin and a square of decor bond underneath just to give you a little stabilization. With these basic three stitches, we can draw and embellish almost anything. We'll use the straight stitch particularly for thick thread, but also to draw. We'll use the zigzag stitch to do soft edge appliqueing, and there's nothing prettier than the garnet stitch for just making things wonderfully textured. Between those three, you can embroider anything. Are made by God. You can quilt that out. That's what I've heard. You can quilt that out. That's the word. You're the professional. Anything is possible. I know it's not perfect.